I wish you the best, and uh, I can't thank you enough. I know Jenny definitely wants to thank you because she made me, she made her life a little easier and made sure Andres was so good that he always made sure that Jenny and I still had a little bit of daytime, time, and that was important. <laughs> Um, you know, you were with me from the start when you went through that primary, as Rick called it, that we had, um, and he made it happen in the field. I never had to question what was going on, and we knocked thousands of doors and talked to thousands, ten thousands of voters, and that was because of Jamal and what he put together on the ground. So I can't thank you enough, and if you don't know, he's sticking with me. He's going to be my district director, so you'll get to see a lot more of him as my my man that uh, was walking and knocking doors me in the primary, he's my canvassing buddy, and uh, and then he, as we transitioned in the general election, he went out and he got the student vote. We always talk about that you don't get student vote. He went and made it happen. Um, and when you have got more than coming to the vote, trust me, every vote matters. All right, now she's gonna be upset. I say something about her. Gwen. There's only one word that describes you, my friend. It's loyal. Gwen Barnes, you you were that one person in this campaign that was so loyal against all of us. Yeah, I had to go through a lot, but you went through a lot as well. And and you were just an incredible in the field, at the polls, and just your loyalty to me uh, will carry carries a lot. So thank you for the bottom line. You know, if I stay here, I don't want to be here all night, because definitely I, what I've learned with a two-year-old is you only have a certain way to look down. So I'm going to try to, to move along. But there's a ton of volunteers that I could thank. Um, you know, I try to see, you know, and be respectful and try to put my team and, and my the big volunteers that I had in the first few rows and, and, and try to thank them. But really, with all the volunteers that we had, Jenny and I had never been in a campaign, ever, where we felt the volunteers' arms wrap around us in this push forward, and that we're really in this together. And so I just want to thank everybody that knocked the door, sent a text, made a phone call, sponsored an event, took pictures, did whatever you had to do, called your friends and neighbors, because without you, I would not be here tonight. So thank you so much. <laughs> Carol and Jerry, Beaver, <laughs> I don't know how to begin to thank you guys. You guys did so many things during this campaign, from helping Gray and, and being there for him and allowing, giving us time to do what we needed to do and picking him up and watching him to knocking doors. Yes, Jerry went out and knocked doors for me. Um, for you attorneys in the room, Jerry went out and knocked doors for me. Um, to go into events, to writing letters, uh, to your financial contributions. Um, I'm so blessed to be part of the Beaver family, and I love you both. my wife Jenny, and I don't say this for the end because I don't want to not overlook it and try to try to finish quickly. Um, Jenny, I, I thank God every day for him putting you in my life. Aww. And then we get to walk side by side together in this journey that he laid out for us. You know, you did it all in this campaign. Mother, wife, yes, she has a full-time job, and still made time and energy to be in events, knock doors, and do everything that you needed to do to be my partner in this. I can't thank you for your unending support of me, even when I made it extremely hard, and you felt my frustration, because there were only really two people in this campaign that could feel those frustrations, and uh, I love you, and I love our son, Greg more than anything, so thank you, dear. And this will be a little hard, but if I have one disappointment in this campaign, in this election, it's that my mom who passed away. In 2015, shortly after I was elected as Fayetteville City Council, wasn't here to share this moment. She's one of the main reasons I'm here today. When we didn't have anything, she taught me that with hard work, 
an opportunity. You can change the outcomes in your life. And that's what drives me every day. So I'm going to move off this emotional stuff a little bit because that's a little much. But I do sincerely thank everyone here. It's been a long 10 months fighting a battle, as Rick said, that many people didn't give us a chance to win. We fought against many odds, challenges, and hurdles at every turn. It was the people that kept me going and encouraged. That's why we did this. I remember many times looking at Andreas and Jamal and saying, just give me a list, just give me a list to go canvas. I need to go talk to people. Because when I talk to people, I remember why I did this. When we knocked those doors, it was so important because you felt what needed to change in this community. And that's what kept me grounded and kept me focused with so many distractions coming at us. You know, the statewide results gave me hope that we can move North Carolina forward again. This election was always about putting people first and restoring the balance in our state government and delivering on a promise of prosperity that everyone deserves, no matter what zip code you were born into. That promise includes public schools that are funded with teachers and employees that don't have to work for the government to take care of their families. Access to affordable health care by expanding Medicaid. Yes, village, protecting our drinking water from poisons like Gen X, and ensuring that our mess was created and cleaned up and cleaned up properly. In an economy and jobs that pay ways that you can support a family and prosper, not make decisions about what bill you can pay or who for, or how you'll be able to afford to send your kids to college. Those are the promises that we talked about, and those are the promises that I'm going to go up and work and fight to ensure that we deliver on, because that's what the citizens of not only Cumberland County, but the citizens of North Carolina deserve. You know, I understand that our community is a diverse community with people from all walks of life. I pray, especially during these times, these interesting times nationally, that we all can remember that friends and neighbors have differing views and still be civil and love one another. I believe today, just like I did when I started our campaign, that there are more things that unite us than divide us as a community. I believe we share many of the same hopes and goals for our communities. I know we all want what is best for our children and for their children. While this election showed that many people wanted a change in the direction of the state, I think it also provided us an opportunity to focus on more ways to help those change, to help make those changes by working together and focusing our attention less on the divisive rhetoric. Thank you again for your opportunity for thank you again for the opportunity to serve each of you and represent your voice in the state senate. I ask you to do two things. I ask you to do one thing. I ask you to hold me accountable when I go to Raleigh. Hold me accountable for what we talked about. Help keep me grounded and keep me focused on the things that are important to the people of this community. But hold me accountable. And I pledge to you to always put the people first and always and always represent, always remember who I represent. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here tonight. Everything you did along the trail, but I will tell you that the work has just begun. I'm going to be coming back to you asking you to sign up and, and continue to push with me. If we're going to change and make the difference that we need to make in this community, it will take all of us. It will take everyone in this room and then some to make those changes. So I ask you to do that as well. I'll be coming back to you, but thank you for everything, and God bless.
and you can see the change is coming. And uh, Kirk is we're gonna bring those changes up in Raleigh also, so we're really excited. So, as my grandmother would 